Hi, I'm Matt. I'm a single dad of three children and I wanted to come on and talk about something that um, is quite, well, very personal to me, but also quite tough for me to talk about um, because it's something that I still struggle with on a daily basis. But I think that it's important to talk about and to bring visibility to, especially from a male perspective, so I wanted to come on and talk about eating disorders today and just my experience. So some of my earliest memories are of my mum watching her get ready um, in the mirror, like so many kids do, and just thinking she's the most beautifulest woman in the world. And to me, she was perfect and she always looked so good. She loved fashion, she loved hair. Um, and she was, she just always was so well put together. And I remember watching her and from a very young age and her having this self, this negative self-talk and saying that she was fat and X, Y, and Z. And I remember thinking to myself like, God, I think she's the most beautifulest woman in the world. Like, how can she, how can she see that? And I think that was my first experience of seeing something that just didn't match up. And um, and then sort of fast forward to about eight or nine, um, I'd really started to use food as a comfort. And um, I think when I was at school, it was just really hard because I would always gravitate, gravitate towards um, the girls and just sort of want to play their games opposed to kicking a ball around and playing with the boys. So I was already a very much a target from a young age, um, just with school grout antics so I think that I found comfort in food and also was probably shown that food was comfort as well okay and then went on to senior school and obviously the bullying really ramped up um just with being a queer in the closet <laughs> teen going through school um it's just tough, you know, and I, again, used food as such a comfort. And then I <clears throat> come out when I was about 17 and was introduced to this amazing, crazy world of London gay scene and going out and feeling, yes, like I just joined this amazing group that and community that I'd been desperate to sort of be a part of but had denied myself for so long. Um, and now I was finally accepting of myself. Um, I could go and be a part of my own community. And I remember going to um, Heaven Nightclub <laughs> for the first, it was the first time I'd ever gone out to a gay, gay bar. And um, yes, just feeling like euphoria of being there and just like dancing and having so much fun. But then also very quickly becoming aware of everyone around me didn't look like me. Um, they all had um, six packs. They all obviously went to the gym quite a lot. And yeah, that just wasn't me. I was very young and yeah, I just remember being on the scene and how it changed me very quickly. In the first year of being out, I lost half my body weight, um, slavered myself in fake tan, dyed my hair, looked nothing like the person that I was um, because I was trying to be something else. I was trying to be this person that I thought I needed to be to fit into that scene and that community when actual fact I didn't at all, but you don't know that at 17, 18. Um, and then I met my, my partner at the time, so my ex now, the person that I stayed with for 16 years. Um, he was the first, first boyfriend, first of many things. Um, and put on some weight, some love weight, as we all do. But also, I think because I felt so comfortable and so safe with him, um, I sort of reverted back to that time when I was young and I did start to then find comfort in food again. Um, so I went down that unhealthy route and then fast forward to having the children. Um, so my eldest, well, there's like a year in between them. So when we had him and then we had the twins, they were all in nappies, they were all having bottles. 
um, my partner at the time went back to work and I was at home with basically which felt like triplets. Um, I felt very out of control of that even though I was very rigid with routine. Any kind of eating disorder is such a shame led disease um, and that's why it can go on for so long without anyone knowing about it other than the person that's going through it. Um, and then I started to get extreme chest pains and um, went to the doctors and they told me that my gallbladder needed to be removed because it was so badly damaged, just abused my body for such a long time that it needed to come out. So I had an operation to take that out. Um, I, the anaesthetic made me very, very sick um, and I felt very sick about a week afterwards and didn't really eat and I lost a lot of weight. And um, I remember that feeling of, this sounds awful, but I want to be honest about it. I remember feeling bones for the first time when I would touch my chest or I'd touch my rib cage. And um, sorry, I just paused it there because I didn't know if I actually wanted to put this in, but. <clears throat> My, something happened with my ex-partner at the time, so my partner at the time, um, where it completely rocked my whole self-esteem and confidence and the way that I viewed myself um, was obliterated really. Um, and then I think that's what then triggered me into ramping that up and that's when the bulimia started so I would start to make myself sick and then that become a habit a daily habit um, and obviously I was at home with the children so it's very easy to sort of live that secretive life um, and I think probably at my list I was doing that sort of eight or nine times a day and even if I was taking down drinking a glass of water I would then go and um, and get rid of that as well and be sick. Um, and there would be weeks, I would say, probably where I wasn't eating more than a mouthful. Um, and the weight did really obviously fell off me. And um, I remember looking in the mirror one day and looking at myself and thinking, you look ill, like you, you don't look nice anymore, you look ill. And um, that scared me and it was the first time that I felt scared. And, um, and then I started to feel quite faint. Um, yeah, and I think that I realised that this wasn't gonna work and that I needed to talk about it and try and get help. And I did, I opened up to family and friends and tried to let them in as much as I could. Um, but as I said, it's such a shame ridden disease. And then fast forward to the present day I would be lying if I said that I still don't struggle with just having a healthy relationship with food and not worrying 24 seven about what I'm eating and how that's gonna affect me or my body or my weight or my health. Um, but I try and realize and have a, a different take on food that is there to fuel me, to keep me healthy for the children, to fuel me for the gym and yes, to enjoy, but in moderation and make sure in, that that moderation is healthy. And some days I get it and there's months and months that pass where I feel that that's completely fine and under control and then something will happen and it will trigger me. Also to celebrate them moments when I am I am on that healthy journey and I am excited about going to the gym and I am excited about going out for a big family meal and it doesn't feel stressful and it does, feel all the, them feelings that it should feel like, you know. I wanted to come on and talk about that because I think that so many people are dealing with body image issues, body dysmorphia, bulimia, eating disorders in whatever form that you are. Um, and so many people are doing that on their own and I did for many, many years and it's the most loneliest place to be. And you feel like you're in control of your eating, but actually, the bulimia is in control of you and that's a big lesson that I've learned um, and I've tried to take back control for myself 
um, in every aspect of my life really. And I just wanted to share that with people because I think it's really important to talk about, especially being a male and you will get to a point in your life where it feels less hard. And I think that's all about the support and the community that you have around you. And I truly believe that's why I'm sitting making this video now is because I feel that I can talk about it because I have these amazingly strong supportive people around me. And, you know, I think that's so incredibly important that you surround yourself with a safe space to express anything that you're feeling. Um, anyway, nice to talk to you all. And um, if you like the video, please comment, leave me a comment, tell me what you thought um, and subscribe. And let me know if there's anything that you want me to talk about in another video. And uh, speak to you soon, guys. Thanks.